the scientific assessment panel of the Montreal Protocol, the UNS, has come out with a report stating that the Earth's ozone layer is recovering well and will be fully recovered by the year 2066 globally. This is great news for us and will help in limiting global warming. But just a little bit. Had we not started banning ozone depleting chemicals like CFC, remember that, we would have been in a worse situation right now. The ozone layer absorbs up to 97% of the sun's medium frequency UV rays, which damage life, killing life on earth and leading to also skin cancer. So in the 70s, when scientists found out that the ozone layer was getting damaged, they knew there had to be drastic collective action. So the Montreal Protocol was signed in the 80s, which completely cut out all CFC from products like hairsprays and electronic appliances. And now, the Montreal Protocol's scientific panel has announced that the ozone layer will be healed over the next few decades. So what is happening with the ozone layer now? Why has it taken so long for it to recover? And what is the ozone layer's future? The news about the alarming depletion of the ozone layer blew up around the world in the early 80s. It was the most feared catastrophe around the world and scientists went all out because of the rapid rate at which ozone was depleting. The discovery was first made in 1976 and the Montreal Protocol was signed in 1987. After the signing of this protocol, collective action was exhibited by leaders all around the world. The entire global community committed to independently and completely eliminating sources of chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs which were used in fridges and ACs and also as solvents for aerosol sprays. Had the Montreal Protocol not been signed and had we still been using CFCs, global temperatures would have risen by an additional 1 degree Celsius compared to pre-industrial times. As of 2017, we are 1 degree over and we are expected to breach the 1.5 degree mark over the next few years. But everyone collectively around the world dropped the use of CFCs and the ozone layer eventually started to heal. It is the biggest collective environmental action the world has taken to solve an environmental problem. In 2018, a spike was detected again in CFC emissions and was tracked to China, but this was eventually resolved. The new report says that the ozone layer would be fixed around the world by 2040 except at the poles. The ozone layer over the Arctic will get fixed by 2045 and over the Antarctic by 2066. Why does the ozone layer take so long to recover? This is because CFCs remain in the atmosphere for up to 100 years. They are very stable and therefore can survive for long periods of time in the atmosphere. Once they climb higher and reach the ozone layer, UV from the sun breaks down these CFC molecules and releases chlorine atoms and this destroys ozone molecules. Chlorine and bromine react with ozone which is made up of three oxygen atoms. A single chlorine atom can destroy a hundred thousand molecules of ozone before it fully degrades and disappears from the atmosphere. Holes in the ozone layer are not physically large holes. They are pockets of regions where the amount of ozone is very less compared to what it should have been. To replace CFCs, companies started using HFCs or hydrofluorocarbons. While they don't react and degrade the ozone layer like CFCs did, they are extremely potent greenhouse gases. In fact, they are much more potent than carbon dioxide, even though they are released in smaller quantities. How potent a greenhouse gas is depends on two things. How long it stays in the atmosphere or its lifetime and how much and what kind of radiation it absorbs. Carbon dioxide is the reference metric that is used for comparison and even though there are other gases that have stronger heat retention properties, the amounts of carbon dioxide emitted make it the most potent greenhouse gas in our atmosphere today. So while HFCs aren't degrading the ozone directly by breaking down, 
they are warming up the planet greatly. The recovery of the ozone layer doesn't occur smoothly and uniformly. And as the world is still warming every day, there are ups and downs and changes in the rate of recovery. 200 countries had signed the original Montreal Protocol and they have also agreed to phase out HFCs. Well, their countries are supposed to do so right now, while low and middle income countries will begin in a couple of years. This is called the Kigali Amendment to the Montreal Protocol and targets the phase down of HFCs. So what will replace HFCs in our ACs and fridges? There are many options like hydrofluorooliphins, HFOs, which could be toxic. There's hydrocarbons like butane, which are flammable. And then there's also carbon dioxide itself, which is both non-toxic and non-flammable. However, the Montreal Protocol still excludes other greenhouse gases like nitrous oxide, which is currently affecting the ozone layer the most. Thus, although this new report is good news and the ozone layer is recovering slowly, it is not fully fixed and we can't simply forget about it even after nearly 50 years. We have to take active efforts to still enable the recovery of the ozone layer. The Montreal Protocol was the biggest climate success story and the identified ozone depleting substances were removed rapidly from multiple industries and supply chains. From electronics to appliances to medicine, agriculture and hospitality, many places used CFCs and all these sources of CFCs were completely eliminated. The lesson from fighting to preserve the ozone layer is that clearly, if change is needed on a global level, it can be done without disrupting all of society. This has happened in the past. And completely eliminating emissions from fossil fuels is not only possible, but also is extremely urgently needed right now. And therefore, following in the Montreal Protocol's footsteps is necessary.